So let's go ahead and button this guy up while we're waiting. Uh, we're going to start with these standoffs that came with the frame and the short screws that came with the frame. And those screws are just going to go up through the bottom into the standoff. Not really rocket science. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six standoffs. You can see there exactly where they go. And they are going to go with the recessed part facing the outside and the flush part facing the inside. Go ahead and push them all the way down to the very base so that they are level with each other. We're going to take these screws out of the DJI camera. This is a 1.5 millimeter driver. And paying attention to the up facing arrow on the camera, we're going to install the camera in the bracket. It's nice that DJI gives you the option to flip the image upside down because the first time I did one of these installs I installed the camera upside down and I was like oh no I'm gonna have to take it all back out again to flip it over but I didn't have to. Now when you install the camera you can set your camera angle your up tilt angle the more up tilt you have the faster you'll go and that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your skill level. I suggest an up tilt angle of maybe 10 or 15 degrees for a beginner. Like not zero up tilt, but not a lot. Less is better if you're not sure. Okay. This is the antenna holder for the antennas. First we're going to put these sleeves on the outside and that will just set the height of the antenna holder. And the antenna holder goes on yeah like this. Right. Go ahead and install the antennas first. Well, I don't I don't love that. I'm sure that's how it's meant to be, but it's pretty tight. Seems to be the best way to do this. You want to make sure the antennas are facing up and out so when they bend down they'll plug into the air unit and that one is just like right where it needs to be. It has no room to work. I'm going to make sure that the MMCX connectors for the antenna are pressed up against the standoff and that's going to hopefully help keep them installed. Oh, we need to get this plugged in too. Okay. I guess that's fine. I'm going to take a small amount of, this is Scotch Extreme Mounting Tape. Just a little bit of that on the bottom of the air unit to hold it in place. And then this is by far the fiddliest part of this whole freaking endeavor. I'm going to get the antennas plugged in. Yes! And I'm going to place the air unit such that the MMCX connectors are pressed against the standoffs and that will hopefully help them stay plugged in 
And then on top of that, I'm going to take some zip ties because that mounting tape by itself will give out over time. I don't love this because it means that in a shock, this standoff is going to transmit shock directly to the antenna connector and that's just not going to be good in the long term. But based on how this 3D printed thing is goes, I just don't see any other way to make this work. So that's we're going to stick with that for now. And there we go. She's nearly done. There's still a little bit more we need to do inside on the computer, but she's nearly done. Let's go ahead and put the top plate on. Oh, with the Rotary logo facing up, of course. Ooh, don't she look good. You're not quite done yet, though. Uh, there's one more thing that I suggest you do, and that is to install a battery pad. The battery's going to go on the top plate here, and it's just going to slide around. A battery pad is, this stuff is called Umagrip. It's made by Umagod, the pilot and um, it's pretty good but if you want to just go with a generic gel pad of any description I'll put a link to this stuff down in the parts list in the video description but there are many different kinds of gel pads and battery pads you can use you don't have to use this exact branded stuff I do think it's pretty good but like how good could it be it's just a gel pad but it's got just the right mix of like stickiness but not too sticky that it anyway well, we don't want to cover up the Rotoriot logo, do we? So we'll put that right here. Okay, great. Battery pad installed. The next thing we're going to need to do is make sure that the motors on the quadcopter are spinning the correct directions. If the motors aren't spinning the direction that the flight controller wants them to be spinning, the quadcopter won't fly right. It won't fly at all, really. In order to do this, we're going to need a program called BL Heli Suite 32. BL Heli Suite is the program that we use to manage the ESC, and the ESC is in charge of what direction the motor spins. You're also going to want to download Betaflight Configurator at the same time. And I have a video showing how to download Betaflight Configurator and BL Heli Suite and just sort of get set up. You only need to do this once at the beginning um, if you have never done it before. There's a link to that video down in the video description. Go ahead, pause this video, go watch that one, get Betaflight Configurator and BL Heli Suite 32 installed, and then come on back here and I'll show you what we need to do. So here's Betaflight Configurator, and I'm going to go ahead and plug my quadcopter into USB on my computer. There we go. And I see a new COM port appear and I'm gonna connect. And I'm gonna go to the motors tab. Then I'm gonna take a battery and I'm gonna plug the battery in. And you need to have your props off when you do this. Your props need to be off for safety, for real. All right. I want to hear that same tone that indicates that everything is going great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this option here. I understand the risks. The props are removed. Enable motor control. Your props need to be off. I'm not joking. I've just noticed that this flight controller has been shipped with reversed prop rotations. This is reversed right here. Uh, I prefer to use standard prop rotation. And specifically, I had you put the motor wires on this side of the arm on the assumption that the prop was going to be coming from this direction. So we go to the configuration tab and turn off motor direction is reversed and hit save and reboot. And then we're going to go to the motors tab and now, okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I understand the risks. I'm going to click one time on the master slider and then I'm going to just press the up arrow a couple times. And as I do that, the motors should begin spinning. That's good. We don't need them spinning super fast. Then I'm going to take, a, I like to use just like a piece of paper, and I want to check which direction the motors are spinning. You can just, sometimes if you touch them with your finger, it's not obvious which way it's spinning. So I'm going to check them, and I'm going to verify that the motors match the direction shown in this diagram. So the back right motor should be spinning counterclockwise, or clockwise, clockwise, and it is not. Motor number one needs to be reversed. The front right motor should be spinning counterclockwise. It is. Motor number two is fine. The back left motor should be spinning counterclockwise. 
it is. Motor number three is fine. And the front left motor should be spinning clockwise. It is not. Motor number four needs to be reversed. So I'm gonna just remember or make a note, motors one and four need to be reversed. Now, you may not get the same results that I did, depending on exactly how you put the wires on your, on your ESC, but whatever motors did not match the diagram, those are the ones that you need to reverse. Now, at this point, you have two options. If you hate computers and you hate using software to fix problems like this, you can choose to swap any two of the three motor wires, get in there with your soldering iron, and swap any two of the three motor wires on the motors that need to be reversed, and that will reverse their direction. I prefer to do it in software and just keep my wiring neat and keep my soldering iron in its holster. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna disconnect and close Betaflight, and I'm gonna go to where I downloaded BL Heli Suite 32, and I'm gonna run BL Heli Suite 32. Next thing I need to do is select interface, and this should be set correctly by default, but you need it to be the BL Heli 32 bootloader Betaflight slash clean flight interface. And we're going to go to the COM port here, and we're going to select the COM port that our flight controller is on. If you're not sure which COM port your flight controller is on, unplug the flight controller. That COM port will disappear from the list. When you plug it back in, it'll pop back up again. So COM3, and I'm going to hit Connect. And then I'm going to hit Read Setup. And then what I want to do, you'll see right here, we're configuring all four of the ESCs together. If I right click the mouse on one ESC, that ESC will then be selected and I'll only be working on that ESC. And I'm going to change the motor direction for that ESC from normal to reverse and hit right setup. Now I needed to reverse motors one and four. So now I'm going to right click on four and change motor direction to reversed, right setup. And now if I hit the check button, it will reread all four of the ESCs. And I can actually go to the ESC overview tab and verify that motors one and four are reversed, motors two and three are normal, and that's what I wanted. I'm gonna disconnect. And I'm gonna power cycle everything. Power cycle the flight controller. Okay. Plug back in. And now at this point, we can start beta flight back up again. We can go back to the motors tab. We can tag that box again. Props are off. Click once on the master slider. Press the up arrow a few times to get the motor spinning. And we're going to double check that we got that right. I know you think you got it right, but maybe you didn't get it right. Let's just re-double check that the motors are spinning the right direction.